Oh, but Lydia. It's no use, Dad. I'm not going to give in to the boy. You've been telling your stories to him night after night for who knows how long, and he's getting to expect them. Why shouldn't he expect them? It doesn't do for boys. <coughs> I don't think so. He's laying up for a sad disappointment for himself one of these days. Well, well he's getting a sad disappointment now. Come on, Lydia. I'm not going to die just yet, and you can break him off gradually when I begin to look likely to. Who said you were dying, Dad? Well, you were speaking of the disappointment he was laying up for himself if he got to count on me to tell him I stories. I was you're dying, Dad, only it, it's no good for a child to just get his way all the time. There's no harm in my giving him a story before he goes to bed. I'm not saying there's any harm in it this once, Dad, but... It's not right to go on night after night with never a break. What, what way is it not right if there's no harm in it? It's giving in to the boy. But why not give in to him if there's no harm in it? Because it gets him into the habit. But why should he not get into the habit if there's no harm in it? Really, Dad, you might as well be a boy yourself. You're that persistent. No, Lydia, I'm not persistent. I'm reasoning with you. You said there was no harm in my telling him a story, and now you say I'm not to, because it'll get him into the habit. What I'm asking you is, where is the harm of getting into the habit if there's no harm in it? You can be clever <laughs> twisting the words in my mouth, Dad, but right is right and wrong is wrong for all your cleverness. Oh, well, I'm not being clever, Lydia, not now. I'm just trying to make you see that if you admit there's no harm in a thing, you can't say there's any harm in it. And oh, I just, I want to tell Alexander a story before he goes to bed. Idiots. That's it, Peter. You've given to anybody if they were just persistent. He's an old man. I know he's an old man, Peter, and you're a young one, and Alexander's going to be another, and I'm the only woman among you, but I'm not going to give in to all of your... After Lydia, there's no harm in it. Just... No, no, you've started, have you? Harm, harm, harm. You're talking about harm, and I'm talking about right and wrong. You'd see your son grow up a drunk and maybe a thief and a murderer, so long as you could say there was no harm in it. But I couldn't say there was no harm in that, Lydia. And I wouldn't. Only when there's no harm. And oh. I'm his grandfather. If I... In your bed yet, Alexander. She's not reasonable, Peter. She doesn't argue fair. Now, I won't complain about her mother, but it's odd when the only two women I've known to be really chatty and argumentative with should have both been like that. Well, they're all like... Oh, well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, Peter. You see, I've only had these two to study carefully, and it's not fair to judge the whole sex by just the two examples. Oh, but it is hard, and, and I... Wanted to tell Alexander an especially fine story tonight. Uh, well... Well, maybe in the morning. Yeah. Well, if it's not right this night, it, it'll not be right in the morning or the night. You can't say that, Mr. Perney. It wasn't wrong last night. Oh, it wasn't. Lydia hadn't worked it out yet. Come on, Mr. Perney. I mean, don't get sarcastic. It's just... I can't help it. I was wanting to tell Alexander a special fine story tonight. And now here's Lydia with her rights right and wrongs wrong. Oh, there's no reason for the woman. Well, we have to give in to them, though, right? Peter, do you hear him? Who? Alexander. Uh, no. For crying his heart out. 
He's not crying. Lydia's with him. Oh, and Lydia's with him, but he's crying. He, he wanted to hear a story about the elves and forest spirit at Cross Hill. Oh, there never was a female philosopher, you know, Peter. Never? No, and there never will be. But there's an awful lot of philosophy about women, Peter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're unreasonable. And, and yet you can't reason them down. They're weak, and yet you can't make them give in to you. Oh, of course, you'll say you can't reason down a stone or make a clod of earth give in to you. A lie. Yes. <laughs> and you'll be right. But what I'd tell you then, a stone won't answer you back and a cloud of earth will try to withstand you. So how can you argue them down? You can't. No, you're right. You can't. But a woman will answer you back and, and she will stand up against you. And yet you can't argue her down, though you have the strength and reason on your side. She's talking nothing but blather about rights, right and wrongs, wrong. And sending a poor child off to his bed in one room and leaving her old father all alone in another. Lydia! Oh. Your father's crying. I can't help that. There's another boy in there crying too, and I can't help that either. And he's crying twice as loud as this one. You are a heartless woman. No, I'm not heartless, Peter, but there's too much heart in this family already, and someone's got to use their head. <sighs> I'm sorry to see you disappointed, Dad, but don't you... <laughs> Or the neighbors will think we're murdering him. Oh, you hear that, Peter? What? She, she, she's sorry that I'm disappointed. The woman thinks she's right. Oh, women always think they're right. Maybe that's what makes them so obstinate. Huh? Yes, but she is afraid of the neighbors, though. Yeah, well, all women are afraid of the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor little guy. I told you he was crying, Peter. He was disappointed. Do you know what I'm thinking, Peter? What? I'm thinking he's too young to get his own way and I'm too old. That's an important thought. Yes? Yes. I, I never thought of it before, but that's what it is. He's not come to it yet and I'm past it. What's the most important thing in life, Peter? Uh, you know perfectly well. What is it that you're wanting all the time? Uh, different things. Yes, different things. But you want them all, do you not? Yes. If you had your way, your own way, you'd have them all, right? Of course I would. <laughs> Ah, uh, then is that not what you want, your own way? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what life is, Peter, getting your own way. Oh. First, yeah, first you're born and you can't do anything but cry, but God's given your mother ears and you get your way by just crying for it. So, yeah, I know that's not exactly in keeping what I've been saying about Alexander, but a newborn child's an awfully delicate thing. And the Lord gets it past its infancy by a dispensation of providence very unsettling to our poor human understandings. You'll notice the boys stop trying to get their way by just crying for it when they're old enough to get it otherwise. Well, so the habit hangs on to them for a while. <laughs> it does that. Maybe if God's given your neighbors ears and you live close, you'll get your way by a dispensation of providence a while longer. But there's things you'll have to do for yourself when you want to, and you will. You want to hold out your hand, and you will hold out your hand. And you want to stand up and walk, and you will stand up and walk. And you'll want to do as you please, and you will do as you please. <laughs> and then, oh, you are practiced and learned in the art of getting your own way, and you're a man. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Purdy, you're wonderful. 
Uh, I'm a <laughs> philosopher, Peter, but I haven't finished. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Maybe you'd like to make other folk mind you and your way, and, and you try, and if it comes off, you're a big man. Maybe the master of a vessel with three men and a boy under you, as I was, Peter. Wow. And then uh, you, you come down the hill. Down the hill? Yes. Maybe down to wanting to tell a boy a story before he goes to bed, and you can't even do that. And then a while more, and you'll, you'll want to get to your feet and walk and you can't. And a while more, and you want to lift up your hand and you can't. And in a while more, oh, you're just forgotten and done with. Oh, Mr. Perny, I mean. Don't look so troubled, Peter. I'm not afraid to die when my time comes. It's these hints I'm done with before I'm dead that I don't like. What hints? Well, Lydia, with her rights right and wrongs wrong, when I think of telling Alexander a story before he goes to bed. You are persistent. <laughs> no, I'm not persistent, Peter. I've given in. I'm a philosopher, Peter. The philosopher knows when he's done with. Oh, come on, don't say that. It's interesting philosophy is, Peter. And the only philosophy worth thinking about is the philosophy of growing old, because that's what we're doing, all living things. There's no philosophy in a stone, Peter. He's just a stone. And in a hundred years, he'll be just a stone still, unless he's broken up, and then he'll be just not a stone. But he'll not know what's happened to him. Uh, because he didn't break up gradual. First, it was his boat, and then his house, and then give his grandson taken away when he was telling him a story before he goes to bed. Oh, it's losing your grip bit by bit, and knowing that you're losing it, that makes a philosopher, Peter. Well, if I knew what you meant by philosophy, Mr. Perney, I'd be better able to follow you. <laughs> See you asleep? No, he's not asleep, but I've shut both doors and the neighbors can't hear him. Lydia, I mean, just come on. <laughs> what was I telling you, Peter, about boys getting their own way? If the neighbors had ears and they lived close, was I not right? Yes, you were right, Dad, no doubt. But we don't live that close here and the neighbors can't hear him at the back of the house. Well, or maybe that's why you moved Alexander into the back bedroom and gave me the front one. No, Dad. I brought you to the front because it gets more sun, so it's warmer, okay? I believe you. But it's turned out lucky, has it not? A poor boy, if he wasn't here, you wouldn't let him cry his heart out where anybody could hear him, would you? <laughs> Maybe not. Oh. You know very well you wouldn't. <laughs> Peter! Don't take dad's part against me. I'm not. I'm just... yeah. No, I know you're not meaning to. Uh, dad, or... uh, dad, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with me, Lydia. Except that I want to tell Alexander a story before oh. he goes to bed. But you're not going to. Uh, oh. Remember what I was saying about the dispensation of providence to help boys till they could try for themselves, Peter? Yeah. yeah. Did it not occur to you that there ought to be some sort of dispensation to look after the old ones who are past it? <laughs> oh. Well, well, it didn't occur to me at the time. Oh. I the neighbors will hear you. I know I'm not at the back of the house. Oh. They'll be coming to us. Oh, let them then I'll ask me. <laughs> what? You're not behaving yet, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Dad, stop it. They'll think you're crazy. Oh, I know. Lydia, it's not easy for a man who's been respected and looked up to all his life to be thought crazy at my age. But the most important thing in life is to get your own way. Ah! What is that? It's his philosophy that he was talking about. And I'm going to tell Alexander a story, even if they think I'm crazy for wanting to. 
but it's not for his own good, Dad. I've told you so, but you won't listen. I wouldn't listen. It was you who would listen to me when I asked you what harm. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm not going to have that argument again. I've given up argument with women. I'm just going to cry loud and strong till Alexander's brought in here to have his story. And if the neighbors, ah, I think I've said it in just like so like. Peter, go and bring Alexander in here. <laughs> Come on. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. There you are. That's the kind of boy he is. Cries his heart out for a thing and stops the moment he gets it. Oh, do you expect him to go on after he's got it? Ah, uh, but Alexander, you didn't get it all on your own this time. It took the two of us. And hard work it was for the old one. I doubt I've enough voice left for a... Ah! Oh, well, <laughs> what story should it be tonight? <laughs>